All right, everybody, I just wanted to give you a, an update on uh, three cases that recently took place here um, in the city of Bloomington, and there's going to be kind of a theme here today. Uh, first, uh, this past Saturday, um, October 15th, around 9 p.m., uh, a male walked into Walmart. When he walked into Walmart, he walked past a fully marked SWAT car and two fully uniformed police officers uh, when he entered the store. Uh, he entered the store, uh, he decided to go around, and he started to steal some things. Uh, he took some merchandise, stuck it in a crossbody bag, and decided to walk out the store. Obviously, um, in Bloomington, we're not gonna tolerate that. So our officers went to arrest him, and he decided that he didn't wanna go to jail. So he decided to fight. And while he's fighting with one of our officers, our officer um, broke his ankle and his shin while he was fighting with this person. And when he was fighting with this male, he fell to the ground. And when he was on the ground, the male was still fighting. So our officer uh, drive stunned him. And what I mean by drive stun, I'm gonna show our taser here. This is the taser that most officers carry. A drive stun is when you use the spark test like this. The probes don't extend with that. He did that because of the close proximity in which he was to the male. But as a result of fighting with the male, our officer uh, was badly hurt. And our officer would be much appreciative of any prayers that people want to send this way. But the male in this case, Mr. Christopher Townsend, 25 years old, out of Minneapolis, when he was arrested, finally got into custody with the assistance of one of our other officers and a loss prevention person. Uh, Mr. Townsend had requested that he not go to jail and just be issued a trespassing uh, citation. No, his request was denied. Uh, we locked him up and we charged him with fourth degree felony assault on a police officer, obstruction of legal process and possession of a meth pipe and theft. Uh, when we put him into custody, we took good care of him. We gave him Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches is what we provide people at the Bloomington jail. And we got him a new outfit. Um, it's cold in Minnesota, so we wanted to make sure that he got a nice pair of pants. You know, we wanted to make sure that he was warm in his cell. And we wanted to make sure that he got his shirt. So we locked uh, Mr. Townsend up. for assaulting one of our officers and stealing. But I have to say that I was extremely disappointed what happened when other facets of the criminal justice system got involved. Uh, we submitted charges for fourth degree assault. That charge was reduced to a gross misdemeanor obstruction. And as disappointed as I am by this, I'm even more disappointed by the $300 bail that he got, $300. Our officer is gonna have a long recovery, $300 bail. When I grew up, we all knew if you broke the law, you went to go see the justice of the peace. Well now, 
I guess we just get to go see the justice of release. And the justice of release decided to let a person who's been arrested since 2019, or 2000, multiple times since 2016, sorry, for aggravated robbery, second degree assault, burglary, and to be released on $300 bail. So in that vein, with the justice of release, this past Sunday, again at Walmart, uh, on October 16th, around 10 p.m., uh, one of our officers was working, and they noticed um, a couple that was at the cash register. And the couple was playing one for me, or one for you, two for me, at the cash register. What do I mean by that? They were paying for one item, stealing two. <laughs> one for, we pay for one, steal for two. Well, obviously, you can't do that in Bloomington. So uh, we arrested them, and um, the male was found to have a large amount of meth on him and 25, uh, 25 grams of meth and some black tar heroin. Adding to the male's problems, and I want people to <laughs> listen to this, uh, adding to his problems, he drove to Walmart in a stolen vehicle. The vehicle was stolen out of Minneapolis, and the vehicle had stolen license plate. Inside the vehicle was a 9 millimeter handgun, which was stolen uh, out of Burnsville. He had some weed, multiple stolen credit cards, laptop computers, and more stolen license plates. Ironically, the officer that arrested him <laughs> had a few hours prior to this taking taken a theft from vehicle report where someone had called and said someone stole some items from my car. Well, all of those items that had gotten stolen from that car were in the car <laughs> that the male had driven to Walmart in. So not only does he steal all this stuff from Walmart, he steals uh, stuff from people in the neighborhood and he drives a stolen car to Walmart. So uh, because of his actions, uh, we locked Mr. Dimitri Montoya, 25 years old, uh, out of St. Paul up. He is charged with a felon, uh, felon being in possession of a firearm, uh, felony auto theft, and theft, and felony drug possession. And I think I left something out. Um, This is Garfield, sorry, <laughs> this is Garfield. Garfield's a cat, he's got nine lives, he gets nine chances. So I'm gonna read through the outstanding warrants that uh, Mr. Montoya had. Warrant number one, felony fifth degree possession, or felony fifth degree body only warrant, Dakota County. Warrant number two, offering a forged check, Dakota County. Warrant number three, identity theft. Warrant number four, identity theft. Warrant number five, fifth degree drug possession. Warrant number six, uh, fifth degree drug possession. Warrant number seven, aid and abet, financial transactions fraud. Warrant number eight, aid and abet, financial transaction fraud. Warrant number nine, felony identity theft. Garfield the cat, he's only got nine lives. You think that uh, Mr. Montoya would uh, be done. And in fact, no, he wasn't. Warrant number 10, tamper with a motor vehicle. Warrant number 11, forgery. Warrant number 12, felony aid and abet, financial transaction fraud. And warrant number 13, felony theft, 13 warrants, Garfield, K, 
Cat, nine lives, nine chances. Mr. Montoya, 13 warrants. And he keeps getting these get out of jail free cards from the justice of the release. I pray that the justice of the release does not give him another get out of jail free card. 13 warrants. And he's caught with all this stolen stuff. Here at Bloomington, we want people to uh, get the help they need. But it's obviously, it's obvious that Mr. Montoya here, it just ain't working. So hopefully he doesn't get another one of his get out of jail free cards. So the last one I want to talk about today is um, today, and this is a, a sad one, so I'm kind of a little, I'm going to do what I can to hide my emotions on this one. <laughs> So today at around 1130 um, on the 2000 block of Killebrew Drive, we got a report of a carjacking. Um, our victim here is 53 years old and they are handicapped. So three people walked up to him and offered to um, help him remove his wheelchair from the trunk. And he told them that he was good and he thanked them for the help, but one of them decided to get into his car and sit in his seat. And then one of them pulled out a gun on him and they threatened to shoot him. And then they took his car. We just got the car back from Minneapolis. But let me say something. We will find out who carjacked this 53-year-old handicapped male at gunpoint. And you can believe you are going to get one of these. So I would strongly suggest that you turn yourself in. As we continue to investigate this, our detectives are the best. We will catch you. We're going to lock you up. And we got one of these for you. You don't carjack people in our community and run to Minneapolis and think you're going to get away. We will get you. So thank you, uh, everybody. And hopefully everyone has a good rest of your time today. Thanks.